This week, I'm going to migrate Home Assistant off my Raspberry Pi 4 over to the new Home Assistant Blue hardware. If you like watching people make unnecessary changes to their smart homes in the name of science, stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. What's up everyone, my name is Jeff and this is Slacker Labs where we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using Home Assistant and Smart Home Tech. This week, I'm gonna walk you through migrating Home Assistant off a of Raspberry Pi 4 over to the faster and better looking Home Assistant Blue. If you wanna know all the details about whether Home Assistant Blue is for you, then check out last week's video. Otherwise, let's yank Home Assistant off a perfectly good platform and put it on a perfectly good platform. If you wanna be surprised as this process unfolds, then cover your ears, cause I'm about to spoil the ending. Migrating from the Raspberry Pi 4 to the Odroid N2 was super easy and there were no major issues, although it wasn't a perfect migration. But before we get into the specifics, here's the basic process that I'm gonna follow in this video. First, we're gonna boot up the new system. We're gonna create a user. We're gonna perform any updates that are needed to get the current system and the new system on the same version of Home Assistant. Then we'll do a full snapshot of the current system. Then we'll restore that snapshot on the new system. And then lastly, we just need to clean up any weirdness that occurs because of the restore process. Of course, this isn't the only way to do this, and it's probably not even the best way, but I've done a handful of these migrations where I'm switching hardware, and they've all gone smooth using this process. So I tend to stick with what works, unless I'm making a migration video for the views on YouTube. Uh, anyway, let's get on with booting the system. The first step, of course, is plugging in your Home Assistant Blue. This is a pretty straightforward process. Plug cord A into slot B. Boot up is pretty fast. In fact, I didn't even see the preparing Home Assistant screen, although I may have gone to walk the dog. But when I got back, I grabbed the IP that Home Assistant Blue got from my router, and with the IP, I opened my favorite browser and went to http colon slash slash 192.168.7.187 colon 8123. You may be saying why not just use homeassistant.local like the cool kids and that would work. I just want to ensure there wasn't any confusion on the DNS or on my part as I'll be flipping between two running instances of Home Assistant. In any case, if you walk away while booting Home Assistant Blue, you'll probably find yourself at this create user screen when you get back. If you're migrating from another version, you have two options. Take the blue pill and use the restore from previous snapshot option on this screen. From here, you choose your snapshot file, and when it's done, you have a working install, and it will be as if nothing changed. But if you're like me, and your snapshots are over one gig in size, this is not an option. The other option is you can take the red pill and stick around in this new instance for a little bit longer. For that, we need to create a user though. This can be whatever, because we'll restore all the old ones. We just need this to get us into the system. So, add some details and click Create Account. Don't bother with setting location or the discovered integrations. Unless you're not planning on migrating the old version, then you could go ahead and take care of those while you're here. Although, you can always come back and do it later, so I always skip them. Check the core install version over on the system screen in Supervisor. This should be the latest version of Home Assistant. For my method, you want to make sure that both systems are on the same version. So, if for some reason this is not the latest version, then you'll want to do the updates. Next, we need to get our snapshot onto the system so we can restore it. For that, we're going to need the Samba add-on. Head over to the add-on store under Supervisor and click on Samba Share. Then click Install. Once that's installed, you'll want to configure it. Here, you want to make sure that you set up a login and the allowed host includes your network. But details don't really matter here as long as you can get into this new instance. The config will get overwritten when we restore. Once you're happy with the config, click the Start button. Now we need to get a full snapshot of our current system if you haven't already. For this, we'll head over to Supervisor, then Snapshots on our current production system. We'll give our snapshot a name, make sure full snapshot is checked, and click Create. When that's done, we can start restoring Home Assistant. First step is copy that snapshot to our new system. This snapshot can be found in the backup folder on your current system. Just connect to the backup network share on your old system and copy the latest file. Then paste it into the backup share on the new system. Then, once that is done, 
power down the old system. At this stage, you can start moving over any hardware. I had an SDR for my weather sensors and a Z-Wave dongle to migrate. If you didn't power down your old system, make sure you're now on the Home Assistant Blue, and if you want, check to see that Home Assistant sees the new hardware. Once it does, you're ready to proceed. Time to head to Snapshots. On the new system, check to see if it's there. If you don't see it yet, go up to the three dots and select Reload. It looks like my system already sees it, so everything is going well. It was, in fact, not going very well, but it wouldn't be until later that I would realize that. All right, now that our snapshot's here, let's restore. On the restore screen, I always uncheck Home Assistant at the top. Since both versions are at the same, we don't need to use the snapshot version of Home Assistant. I do this out of pure paranoia. This is simply to ensure that I'm starting with a clean Home Assistant install. And it may be a total overreaction. It's just what I do. Overreact, that is. Once you're happy with what you've selected, just click Restore, Selected. At this point in the process, I went off to eat dinner feeling good. When I got back, I expected to see my system up and running. Instead, I got safe mode. If you've never seen safe mode, this is what that looks like. And it basically means that something prevented Home Assistant from completely starting, but it, at least it was nice enough to tell you why and boot up enough so you could fix it. What we are concerned about here is in the middle. It's telling me I have an invalid config and is listing my media directories. And when I flip over to look at my media folder, it's empty. Turns out the full snapshot doesn't include anything in the media folder. That may be common knowledge. I don't read the docs unless things break. But since I have media folders defined in my configuration.yaml, everything is puking because they're not there. But it should be an easy fix. Just need to boot up the old system and copy over the media folder contents. Okay, that's complete. Let's reboot. And that's already looking better. Three notifications. Oh, we've banned 127.0.0.1. Perfect. Glad to see Home Assistant won't take crap from anyone, including itself. It's also telling me I have an integration that needs attention. So let's look at that. Oh, that Samsung one that never connects to the TV. But evidently it's not needed. Home Assistant can still control my TV, so I don't worry about that one. Let's make sure Hacks is up and running. Got a Hacks component update, so let's do that. Okay, I think this looks pretty good. Last thing to do is clear the IP ban, which I forgot to record, but you just have to delete the offending IP from the IP bans YAML and reboot. And here we are, Home Assistant up and running on the Home Assistant Blue. With the exception of the media folders, this migration went pretty smooth. Okay, there were some things that I left out of that process. But I promise, they were not anything that will impact the smoothiness of your migration. One thing I didn't show was that on my Raspberry Pi 4, my Z-Wave dongle was plugged into a USB hub due to some USB port issues on the Raspberry Pi 4. I had originally just moved that hub over to the Odroid N2, which caused some weirdness, so I opted to just plug that USB dongle directly into the Odroid and the issues went away. I'm really impressed with how easy it is to get Home Assistant Blue up and running. For first time users, the onboarding process is super slick. And if you're interested in migrating off of existing hardware over to Home Assistant Blue, the snapshot method seems to work pretty well. And that's it for this video. If you're looking for ideas on how to make your home smarter using Home Assistant, check out some of my other videos. And as always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff. Thank you.